What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my collection of uh, reviews for this week. So much like last week, it's going to be a continuation of what I've been watching and um, that's really about it. I don't have really too much else except for the headlining review for this week, which is Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, Quantumania. Um, the reason I'm watching that now is that, for one, I didn't watch it in theaters, but it's also now streaming on Disney Plus, so I decided to give it a watch, see how if it was any good, um, see if the performance of Kang was up to all the um, hype that I heard about it, and generally just see if it was a good film or not. And I want to say that overall the film was generally pretty good. I liked the visuals of it. I liked a lot of the um, character interactions. The only problem I had with it was early on. The first part of the movie felt really slow, and I mean, it felt on par with the other part, other the first two films, but it didn't really feel like there was much going on. And then it took them a long time to get into the um, plot in the Quantum Mania and then build up King and all of that. But by the time they got there, they knocked out the rest of the film pretty smoothly to the point where I actually kind of wished that more of the film, more of the second half of the film was brought over into the first half of the film. Uh, we had, we spent more time with Michelle Pfeiffer's character when she was in the quantum realm and even a little bit more time of just going back and forth and her explaining stuff, more time with, while she was there that they spent a little bit of time in later on in the movie. So things like that are what kind of took me away from the film, but the performance of Kang the Conqueror was overall pretty good. Um, I liked in general everything that he was doing as Kang Prime, I guess. He was overall good. There was a couple of bits when he seemed not flustered, but out of place as far as when he was going to get defeated and he escaped. So. I would have thought after you know being exiled um, by his other variants that um, he would have been a little bit more above that but in general except for a few minor scenes he did a really good job and this is all of course separate from everything that's ha happening to I think to his life outside of the film but in the film itself I really enjoyed the performance. I now do want to go and read a little bit more about Modoc because it felt like his character was a weird, um, I guess like a parody of Robocop where you have his face stretched out over the front of the helmet and he's just a floating um, face, head kind of thing. Whereas Robocop, you know, have your full body machine suit kind of thing or even a Darth Vader kind of thing. But I kind of want to read a little bit more about Modoc. He was kind of meant to be the comic relief for the comic relief so in general it was enjoyable i liked him but it felt a little bit out of the realm of the silliness that the movie is supposed to provide so um overall though other than that a good film i liked um paul uh, i think her name is cassie ant-man's daughter's um performance in this that she has a suit she um shrinks down she grows big and all of that so in general if you're an ant-man um, film lover or you like him in the comic books then you'll probably like this film it's a good continuation of the first two films it's good to see that tie in with ants themselves and why um, Michael Douglas likes them so much if you're not a big fan of them of the Ant-Man films then you're not gonna really get too much new out of them or enjoyment for me I'm neither here nor there I like Paul Rudd's acting in it I like all the characters so in general it was good but Beyond that, I thought they were generally just okay, so that's kind of also why I didn't really want to go see them and go see the film in the theater. To be fair, I didn't see the first two in the theater, so I didn't have that real connection going through them. So um, it's more also more for consistency's sake that I'm, I didn't want to see it in the theaters, but that by no means means that the films are bad. 
but I will favor the first two films a little bit more over this one. Even though it does set up the um, quantum realm and um, I guess all the parallel universes thing a little bit more. Whereas where this film also leads us into Loki season two where I guess we're going to have Loki and um, Owen Wilson I guess chasing after Kang the Conqueror in medieval England or mid in like early frontier USA or America or something like that so I actually can't wait for that and then we also have um the secret wars coming up which is unrelated to this but um in general the cutscenes continue to um promote the f next phase of the MCU with the quantum realm and the parallel universes and um all of that stuff but um I forgot where I heard about heard the statement or general review but it doesn't feel like they have that centralized focus like they did in the initial phases with um like the avengers all the individual avenger story arcs like captain america and iron man um with thanos and thor and all of them so without that general um focal point it's hard to say what is going to happen or if any of it's going to be good but then it also feels like they're setting up for a larger universe but they haven't they're trying to keep the main um villain or story arcs under wraps unless they're aiming to make Kang the Conqueror that main big bad character to follow up after Thanos on a more universal scale that how can we top um Thanos who only who thought more in terms of the one universe whereas Kang can think across um time and across universes and galaxies and all of that stuff so not to say it's, either, it's good or bad but it just feels like there's a little bit less focus at the moment but there's a potential that they're gonna um round it out really well once all of this stuff comes together um so with that being said um well as far as grading the film i probably give it a solid grade of about a b like i said it started off really slow and rocky but by the end of it it uh, ended really well um if you saw the first two films and like them or Ant-Man is your character and all of this then you're gonna enjoy it a little bit more than me if you're he's not your favorite character and you're gonna like it a little bit less so for me I'm right in the middle neither here nor there so I gave it a B but it's not anything less than a C level quality of film it was good it wasn't great but it also wasn't bad so um if you like Marvel movies you're not gonna hate it but um is definitely worth seeing for completionist sake. Um, with that being said, I also haven't seen the latest Guardians of the Galaxy film in the theaters, um, just because I didn't see the first two in the theaters either. But once it comes is available on streaming, I will be watching it then when it's available on streaming. Um, so with that being said, I did have continued my watch through for Star Trek: Deep Space Nine: The Dominion War. So I finished the first few episodes of season seven so all the lines are drawn we have the uh the kind of rocky relationship between the dominion and the cardassians the bajorans are still on the side of the federation but you have you know the federation and the klingons the bajorans um the ferengis a little bit i guess but overall the lines are drawn the first half of season seven is basically um cisco's attempt to um, find out what happened to the prophets and to see if he's still worthy of being called the emissary while at the same time being able to reopen the wormhole so we'll see how, how all of that plays out but um, essentially this is the continuation of the stage setting of the prior seasons where uh, previously it was you know the Federation learns about the Dominion the Dominion takes over the of Deep Space Nine, the uh, Federation is won and back, strengthening their um, alliance with the Klingons and the Ro and um, the Ferengis and all of that. Um, bringing into season seven is now a tenuous relationship with the uh, uh, Romulans, so I'm enjoying seeing all of that. Um, I didn't really notice any, or there were a few terms here that were kind of reminded me of star trek insurrection which makes me want to go back and rewatch that because i think that was the movie with the death of data if i remember right but um it was also a early um 
the guy who played Bane, I think, was in the film. But for some reason, I don't like it for the visual appeal. But I do want to re. It's been on my bucket list to go back and rewatch Insurrection at some point as well, just because I had a good memory of it. But my alt memory of it also was that I had a bad DVD copy that was skipping a lot, so it was kind of weird. But in any case, we're at that setup where the Federation is trying to make a good relationship with the uh, Romulans so they have more numbers on their side to fight against the Dominion and the Cardassians. So with that, we're going to head into the end game now, the final episodes and the rest of the season, so we'll see how all of that plays out. Um, with Fear the Walking Dead, I did have a chance to watch the second episode, Blue Jay, so the last episode was a focus on Morgan and Kim or Kim Dickens. Uh, the latest episode is a focus on June, so it seems like we're getting character, or based on two episodes, I guess, we're getting character profiles of uh, where everybody's at, what everyone's up to. It seems like everyone has become a collector for Padre, so it seems like everyone's trying to do what they do best for Padre to diminish him from within, break him down, and defeat him that way, so we'll see what happens by the end of the episode, but, uh, or by the end of the season, but so far it seems like it's all character profiles, so um, I'm kind of anticipating that the first half of the season is just going to be that set, final setup for where everyone's at as they're working for Padre, and then the second half of the season is going to be that all-out war to round it out and move on. Um, so to round out this episode, I am continuing to play Assassin's Creed Origins. The favorite part of my recent gameplay at the moment since last episode is I've had a chance to make it to Giza, so we have the visual of the Great Pyramids. Uh, we go into the dune somewhere, but we also get to go into one of the pyramids and see the tomb of Khufu, where you have a lady who's trying to resurrect her daughter. Which at some point I thought they were going to connect that to your main character and trying to resurrect his son, so that might come later. But um, overall, I thought it was a very good um, recent gameplay just because it was nice being able to navigate through the pyramid and go down into the under part of the pyramid in order to find this lady and find out what's going on. Um, and then with all the talks of symbols and pyramids and all that, it gave me a very Stargate vibe. So. If you're a fan of the Stargate movies or TV series, then um, Kafu will resonate with you and Daniel Jackson and all of that stuff. So um, I thought it was a very well done level, very well uh, developed and uh, vis with visual presentation and all of that. And of course, the nice little um, tie-in factor there was that if you climb your way to the top of the pyramid, then you get a fast travel access point. So that was a little bit of fun to scale the pyramid, even though it got a little bit of little annoying because there were part you have to like find the right spots to grab onto so it did take a little bit of climbing and then um sliding back down a little bit and going back and forth to reach the top so i thought that was nice but i thought the visuals were beautiful it was very well done so it's nice to see that uh presentation and story arc but in general i'm continuing the gameplay for assassin's creed so um, that's all up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash patelin01 if you want to follow along. But also that is the end of this particular episode. So um, nothing really new to talk about on the Android side of things. Um, I did set up a new home screen layout in Custom Live Wallpaper Maker to kind of mimic the look and feel of Windows Phone. So if you follow me on the social media sites that are all linked on the website, you can see that post I made this past week or within the past few days of this episode. Um, well, and you can also, to that note, comment on this post, provide your feedback and all of that stuff on the social media sites by visiting headphonesneal.reviews, which also has links to support the show, um, subscribe, get past episodes and all of that good stuff. And of course, like I always say, if you want ad -free, um, an ad-free version of the episode, early access and all of that stuff, then you can uh, support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.